Hello and welcome back to the hot seat on Made in Bristol TV. As GCSE maths and English exams across the country get underway, SGS College in South Gloss has called on the government to rethink literacy and numeracy qualifications after hundreds of their students have had to resit their English and maths GCSE exams at college. SGS currently has 800 GCSE maths and English students who have to resit their exams this June after they didn't get an A star to C grade at school. These students will all be taking their exams at the same time on the same day as required by the examining board. So to cater for such huge numbers, the college has had to employ more teachers and invigilators and also cancel other classes. But should more be done in schools to get kids through their essential qualifications the first time round? Well, Dan Nichols, the executive principal at Cabot Learning Federation, spoke to me at the Kings Oak Academy. Well, I think the, uh, the first thing to say is that there are also lots of students who are progressing with English and Maths through academies and through schools. Uh, and we see those numbers increasing, uh, particularly in Bristol and within the Capital Learning Federation as well. And also there's, there's that balance between students who get English, not Maths, and Maths, not English, for example. Um, it'd be fair to say that academies are really very well focused now on supporting young people to be successful in those two uh, subjects, uh, not least because those are the things that unlock their futures for them. And as schools, we take that incredibly seriously and we devote a significant amount of time to supporting our young people to get those key qualifications to allow them to progress into their future. Um, for those that don't and progress to sixth form uh, then uh, clearly we take the responsibility of catching those individuals up um, as quickly as possible because uh, it is life enhancing I suppose those qualifications in terms of their uh, their progression. I think uh, what a key thing is that um, some students will find it very difficult to be successful even through resets. Um, they spent a long time within schools focusing on the same qualifications trying to get across uh, a certain level and uh, it becomes very difficult um, to give them something that's different and more so that they can then get over those thresholds. And it might be that we need to also focus a little bit more about what it is that young people need in their future and that might be more around uh, the functionality of both English and maths um, so that they have the skills and competencies that they require in their future to apply for jobs, to uh, make sure that when they're buying a car they go through those processes, they can fill out their tax forms, etc. And those real life things are really key. So do you think then that, um, yeah, that maths and English should, should hold a more sort of practical function in some cases with kids needing to know the maths they're going to need in later life, not so much some of the more theoretical stuff? Well I think it's, it's certainly worth a look. I think that there's, um, there's elements of uh, the theoretical stuff which are really valued and for the majority of students uh, that is absolutely appropriate. I think there are elements of functionality, uh, functionality in the qualifications of English and Maths already um, um, but um, maybe we need to have a look at um, post-16 whether um, we're looking at qualifications that are slightly different and uh, based on uh, those things that will open up life for those individuals and maybe not the, the tight getting across the sea boundary at GCSE and continually perhaps feeding some some failure uh, in not being able to get across that line, across that line, across that line again and again. So do you think it is that the exams are just too hard for some students? Are we not building good enough foundations earlier on in children's careers in maths and English? What do you think some of those issues are? I, I think that's a really good challenge. I think um, uh, it's about um, uh, an education uh, in numeracy and literacy in English and maths from three to 19 that's uh, prepare, preparing young people uh, to become successful adults. And I suppose we could look at uh, the whole system in terms of preparing our students through that time to be successful in those qualifications and probably in that, that wider functionality which is actually the, the what, what, what they require. I think there are um, lots of uh, schools and academies in Bristol and across the Cabellina Federation who are really very focused on the quality of that. So for example there's there's a Mastery Maths which is coming through primary schools and into secondary schools which is taking ideas from, from Shanghai and really looking at practice to make sure that students achieve age related standards as they come through school and hopefully into the future we will see that uh, some of the 
the work here with the Maths Hub um, uh, that's part of the Federation will support the young people to focus on getting really core competencies and um, uh, schools and academies, primaries and secondaries, really focusing on making sure they achieve those levels before they move on. And uh, perhaps uh, if we had this interview into the future sometime, we'd be reflecting on uh, the fact that because of some of those initiatives and how hard schools and academies work, uh, then many, many more percent of students are actually achieving uh, at GCSE level. Kids these days have to do quite a lot of GCSEs. I mean, I think I had to do 10 or 11 yes. and, you know, that's quite a lot. Do you think we've actually got the balance right in terms of the number versus actually how much attention is being paid to those really core subjects, which, let's face it, if, if a child nowadays doesn't have maths and English, they are going to really struggle to get a job. I th uh, yeah, I mean, you're right. We, we have to make sure that we focus enough time on those core things that will open the doors for our young people. Um, having said that, education is also about having a broad and balanced curriculum. It's about enabling them to enjoy and have teachers who teach with real passion about their subject, um, because that's what school should be about. It's that, that vibrant mix of different subjects of uh, students engaging passionately in the subjects that they do with great teaching. Having said all of that, they still need English and maths and they need those core numerate uh, and literate skills to allow them to access their future and seize the opportunities that are out there. The, the opportunities in Bristol are growing ever more. Um, it's a vibrant city, it's growing. We should be really optimistic about preparing students for proper futures where they can access those things. And you're right, we need to ensure that whilst the curriculum needs to be busy enough to maintain that interest and, and to create uh, computer scientists and, and geographers and historians that will take us forward, um, we must make sure that the core is absolutely at the centre and we make sure that as many students as possible go through to uh, further education um, uh, and that's because of the quality of English and teaching, um, teaching at, uh, at secondary school. SGS College has sort of spoken out um, about the pressures it really puts on them in terms of resources to have to put so many children through these reset exams. Can you sympathise with that? Well, I can understand that, but I think it's, it's probably core to mission as well that um, we've got a moral imperative to ensure that young people are as prepared for their future as we possibly uh, can make them. Um, there is a huge amount of effort and focus uh, and accountability at secondary level for ensuring as many students as possible uh, achieve the, um, uh, the required standard uh, at GCSE. So it would be difficult to look into secondaries and into academies across Bristol and across the Federation and say, you really need to do more or you're not focused on the right things. That's just not the case. There are students who do find those subjects quite difficult, um, but I think the college also has a responsibility to ensure that those students get what they need uh, at the end of their course um, uh, and, and find the resource to, to be able to do that. So Dan, do you think there should be greater flexibility in schools and they should feel that not every student has to go through GCSEs, A-levels and universities and each should just be working at a way that they can meet their aspirations? I, th I think there's already quite a, a big level of flexibility within uh, our academies and our schools to provide students with the, the really uh, concrete information and precise uh, careers education advice, for example, which allows them to make good decisions because all of that is about empowering our young people to make good decisions. Um, and actually, if we look out into the community, what we need is um, people who are able to do all sorts of jobs and are able to, to, to forward communities uh, in different ways. So there are already um, uh, pathways through apprenticeships and, and through training, um, as well as through A-level. Um, and even within post-16, there are different levels of courses uh, to suit different types of students, I suppose. Um, so I think there is a level of flexibility. You raise a good point around making sure that uh, the advice is really clear and also timely. Um, um, uh, and you also need to give young people that op opportunity to, to see um, the real world, to see employment. Um, uh, I think there's probably a number of students that uh, go through life and don't really understand what they want to do or what the world out there um, is actually like. And so I think uh, being able to give them exposure of employment um, and understanding uh, you know, how they can make their way in the world is also really crucial. Finally, Dan, are you comfortable? Are you comfortable to say that you're happy with the number of students who leave your academies in the Cabot Learning Federation with their core subjects, their maths and English? 
uh, we should never settle. We have, we have real ambitions within the Catalonian Federation uh, to ensure as many students as possible achieve English or maths with good GCSEs. All the, um, uh, the different measures are changing for next year, uh, which will uh, you know, require us to perform well across a broad and balanced curriculum, uh, and that's our goal. I think part of what the Cabot Learning Federation does is it has really high ambitious targets for young people um, and we succeed in some of those but that ambition will never fade. Um, we have high expectations of young people, they need these qualifications and so I suppose am I happy with how many we've got at the moment? I'm not and I'm hugely ambitious for those young people into the future. There's been a lot of um, issues around the maths exam papers and you know yeah. even up to this year. Do you think that that confusion or that you know uh, a lot of attention is causing more pressure and anxiety for both teachers and students? Uh, yeah I think it can do and I think social media doesn't help um, because uh, it tends to be uh, exploded in terms of, of issues. Um, I think um, we need to ensure uh, particularly in terms of students that they go through a fair system um, and that they're fairly tested uh, at each of those stages particularly uh, at GCSE. Um, and I think largely the, the, the system is fair to them, um, uh, but we must be uh, guided about that into the future. Well, that's all we've got time for in this week's Hot Seat. Thank you to all my guests for joining me and thank you for watching at home. Remember, if you've got a story you'd like to see on the programme, you can get in touch. It's news at madeinbristol.tv. Join me next time. But for now, bye bye.